guys. So I'm just going to make you guys a little um, teaching video and just start walking you through this thing. It's called the Purple Book. It's a discipleship manual. Um, it's called Biblical Foundations for Building Strong Disciples by Rice Brooks and Steve Morell. So, so we use this at my school to go through um, teachings with the new believers. So it just takes you one by one through um, many different types of or topics through scripture. But the beginning we'll start with is Genesis 1. So it's just talking about creation and um, what the beginning was like. So we're going to start by just opening in prayer. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this time. And I just thank you for uh, starting to do a work in Zach and Macy, Lord, and Avery, and all everybody else who sees this, that they would know who you are, that they would know the value that you place on them based on the cross, Lord, that you could um, stand to tell after the cross, Lord, how much you love them, Lord, that their value is in you. I just ask you to open their ears to what the Spirit is saying, Lord, that they would um, receive this as good soil and they would receive it with boldness, Lord, that they would not be ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of salvation for men, Lord. I thank you for a peace that comes over them while watching this, that they would hear with clarity, that they would hear and just be still inside, Lord, that they would know you're God and they don't have to work through this or earn it or perfectly understand it, but that you're doing a work in them they don't have to see with their physical eyes. So Lord, we just thank you for this time. I ask you to bless it and go before us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... Okay, so chapter one is sin and salvation. Let's see. So if you want to read this, you can just pause it and go through it. So, sin and salvation. So sin is what separated man from God, and uh, salvation is being restored back to God. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is Genesis 1. 1. And through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That's John 1, 3. All things have been created through him and for him. That is Colossians 1.16. Okay. So the earth, humanity, all that we see around us had a beginning. God declared each phase of creation good until he created the first man, Adam, and said that it was not good for him to be alone. So God created Eve, the first woman, and gave the original couple everything to enjoy. They were only forbidden to eat the fruit of one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The fatal decision that followed and its tragic results have affected all of human history. Humanity would pass down this fatal flaw, this inner corruption, from generation to generation. The power of evil and darkness would have prevailed, except for God's intervention. His plan of salvation, of deliverance from evil's power, began to unfold in the very Garden of Eden. This is the primary story of the entire Bible. So the beginning of Lesson 1, um, there's some questions. Um, it says, what was creation like in the beginning? Um, so this would be something that I'll go through briefly, but it would be really awesome for you guys to just read through Genesis 1. Um, let's see. So actually there are multiple... questions here. So I'm actually going through this book for the first time with you guys. So it'll be super good. Um, we'll all learn it together. Okay, so read Genesis 1 through Genesis 3. and Or listen to it. Like I told Zach, you guys can listen to it if you're having a hard time reading it. But I would recommend finding a balance. Like read some, listen some. So at the beginning it says, what was the creation like in the beginning? Genesis 1. Um, so I'm just going to read the very beginning of Genesis 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was totally empty, devoid of all life, both animal and plant, and darkness was on, upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, or the Holy Spirit, hovered, bro brooded over the face of the waters. And God said, Light be, and there was light. 
and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening and there was morning, day one. And God said, Firmament, be in the midst of the waters, which means uh, division or um, an expanse. Be in the midst of the waters, divide the waters from the waters, and God made the firmament, firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament the heavens, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Waters under the heavens, be gathered together to one place, dry land, appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and he called the gathering together of the waters the seas. And God saw that it was good. Um, so that's the answer to number one. It says, what was creation like in the beginning? Genesis 1. So again, you guys can go through this stuff. Here's the questions if you want to pause it. And then here's the next page. So, um, verse 10, it asks, verse 10, 12, 18, 21, and 25. So, verse 10, it says that there was, um, the dry land is called earth, and he called the gathering together of the water seas. And you guys can also give me feedback, because I've never really done videos like this, so I'm thinking that um, in the future I'll probably just ask the questions, and you guys can go through the answers while you're on the other end. Um, and you guys can just, like, send me a video response, or maybe we can get Marco Polo or something. We'll figure something out as we learn a little bit how to do this better. But it says in verse 10 that the land, uh, it says there's land, seas, and it was all good. Um, in 12, it says there's grass, green plants, fruit yielding seed, meaning that it had seed inside of it, and it, when it, um, yeah, and it was good. And verse 18, it was separated, or he separated the light from the darkness. Verse 21, sea creatures, flying creatures, and it was also good. And then verse 25, it says he made wild animals, livestock, and crawlers, and it was good. Um... So the next question is, how many commands did God give Adam and Eve? So, um, for the sake of time, I'm going to, let's see, how long is this? Actually, no, I am going to read it. Okay, so I'm going to pick up in Genesis 1, verse 10. And it was so, and God called the land earth, and he called the gathering together of the waters the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Earth, bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself, upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Lights, be in the firmament of the heavens, to divide the day from the night. Be for signs and for appointed times and for days and years. Lights, be in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Waters teem abundantly with the moving creatures that has life. And fowl to f teem abundantly with the moving creature that has life. And fowl to fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created the great whales and every living creature that moves, with which the waters teemed abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after its kind. And God saw, God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and fowl, multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Earth, bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after its kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, We will make mankind in our image, after our likeness, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created mankind in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, it will be food for you. So every fruit on a tree that bears seed, that has seed inside of it, that was um, the food that we were supposed to eat. So behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, it will be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, in which there is life, I have given you every green herb for food. And God saw everything and that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So he said it was very good on the last time. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and the entire host of them were finished. So this is the beginning of chapter 2. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And, um, and again, you got to understand, this is really old language. Like, this has been translated into somewhat modern English, but this, is, this was verbally translated um, for the first several hundred years, of, if not thousands of years. I'm not sure, honestly. Um, it was verbally passed down generation to generation. So this is from... Uh, I should know this, but this is from at least, like three or four thousand years ago I want to say I think it's like four thousand maybe even a little longer maybe five thousand years ago so this is translated into modern English pretty well considering um, and to every beast of the earth to every follow oh whoops okay beginning of two and on the seventh day and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So that day would be um, Friday night to Saturday morning. So Sunday is the first day of the week. So the, um, these are the chronicles of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And no plant of the field was yet on the earth, and no herb of the field yet had yet grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth, and it watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden, eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God made to grow out of the ground every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Also the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out to Eden to water the garden, and from there it was divided, and became into four headwaters. The name of the first headwater is Pishon. This, that is it which encompasses the whole land of Havilah, which you don't need to know any of these right now, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gahan. The one that encompasses the whole land of Cush, and the name of the third river is Hittico, that is that it is which goes toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but you will not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in that day the, the day that you eat of it you will surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man Adam should be alone. I shall make a helper for him, corresponding to him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in its place. 
and he built the rib which the Lord God had taken from man into a woman and brought her to the man. Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called wife, because she was taken out of husband. So in Hebrew, that's isha or isha, and he's taken from she's taken from ish. So he's saying uh, woman or a part of man. Therefore, a man will leave his father and his mother and will cling to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So that's the end of chapter 2. Um, okay, so chapter 2 talks about how many commands, did, or sorry, question 2 is how many commands did God give Adam and Eve, which is Genesis two seventeen. So it's uh, one command. He did not, he just told them not to eat of the one tree, but he gave them probably thousands of trees to eat from, just asking them, by giving them free will, he gave them the choice to eat um, and be obedient to that one command. So what was God's command to the first human beings? Not to eat. Um, to eat of every good tree, but not to eat of the evil. And so, okay, the rest is all Genesis 3. So, let's see. Okay, so I read the first two chapters. Well, um, okay, the future, I'm going to try these, I'm going to try to keep these videos to like 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm going to just read it. Now the serpent was more tricky than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Really? As God said, You will not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You will not eat of it, neither will you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, then your eyes will be open, and you will be like God's knowing good and bad. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit of it and ate, and gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I ate. And that means deceived. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. You will go upon your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I shall put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I shall greatly multiply your sadness, um, or nerves and your childbearing, you will bring forth children in sorrow and your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you saying, you will not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. You will eat of it in sorrow all the days of your life. Also thorns and thistles will bring it forth to you and you will eat the herb of the field. By the sweat of your brow will you eat bread, until you return to the ground. For out of dust were you taken, for you are from dust, and to dust you will return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all, cre of all living. For Adam and also for his wife the Lord, God made garments of skins, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Uh, th therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to till the ground from where he was taken. So he drove the man out and placed, him, placed the cherubim, which is a form of angels, at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Okay, so that is all of... Um, Genesis 3 as well. So, 
How did Adam and Eve respond to God's command in Genesis 3, 6 through 7? In 3, 6 through 7, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit of it and ate, and gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. So they responded to God's command by disobeying his only command. They ate of the tree of, good, of the knowledge of good and evil, and then they were ashamed and they um, hid themselves by, they sewed fig leaves over their privates um, so that they wouldn't feel naked anymore. Um, yeah. And then, in light of this, do you think that you would have responded any differently? Probably not. <laughs> think about what God attempted to shield Adam and Eve from, the knowledge of evil. What loving parents today don't do everything possible to protect their children from dangerous material on television, on the internet, or anywhere else. So that's just food for thought. You guys can discuss that and pray for each other and just love on each other while you're doing this. Um, or like later, you know, you guys could plan a time. That'd be cool. Um, question six. Who tempted Eve in Genesis 3.1? Now the serpent was more tricky than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent, um, or Satan, tempted her. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, in essence saying to God, We don't need you or your rules. They disobeyed God. They sinned. How did Adam and Eve react after their eyes were open and they realized they were naked? So verse 7, 8, and 10, like we said, that they sowed the fig leaves, and then they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, and they hid themselves, um, and they were afraid because they were naked, and they hid themselves. So they were ashamed and afraid of the Lord, so they hid from him. Why do you think they reacted this way? Um, so that's a good question for you guys to discuss. How did God respond to Adam and Eve's sin? Um, in 3, 8 through 9, he said, so that he, the Lord already knew that they had sinned. He knows everything. So he came calmly asking them what happened. And he just called to them, hey, where are you? You know, He's looking for his children. He didn't freak out. Um, notice the two very different responses to humanity's sin. Humanity covered up and hid from God. God sought after humanity. So God was running to us with love, trying to help us. And that, this is the very end right here. Things have not changed much since the beginning. After thousands of years and billions of people, human beings still hide from God, and God still seeks. This is the starting point for understanding salvation. So application and reflection. So you can just like do this verbally or get a piece of paper. I'm telling you it would be really cool to have like a journal with you guys and write this stuff down because in the future you'll look back on this stuff and it'll be built up history. Like I was telling Macy that I journal a lot and it really is amazing to look back on. So um, what did you learn from this lesson and how will you apply it to your life? Okay, so that's chapter one. Okay, so I just want to encourage you guys, just tell you I love you. I'm so proud of you guys. Um, I also want to hear how you feel about everything. I want this to be something where I'm not just like lording over you. I want you guys to feel the freedom to give me feedback and to help me do this better. I want to learn with you guys and go with you guys on this journey. Um, so, yeah, after you guys watch this, just kind of respond when you have a couple minutes and let me know how everything is going. And, yeah, we'll keep in touch. I love you guys.